<laughs> Do that again, right? You're going to go again. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second time. For people listening, we've just been talking for about five minutes yeah. and I had not yeah. record. Krishna Thapa. Right, we are recording. <laughs> We're back in life now. Mate. I was just slagging you off for being an admin. <laughs> and then it's me. Right. Uh, Chris Tapper. Absolute pleasure, mate. Absolute pleasure. Just an icebreaker. That was fascinating in itself. Eight questions, which we went down. You, I didn't go down the rabbit hole. You went down the rabbit hole. A bunch of <laughs> yeah. questions like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you be on the studio. With like 24 hours notice that you gave me, I'm not complaining at all. I'm not compl- it's like it's a rep- it's a recurring thing with you, Erifred lot. Like, I get drop of a pin, Are you, can you be there tomorrow? I'm gonna have to be, am I? I'll be there tomorrow, right? So, here in the studio, um, right, you so just quickly for people listening or watching, Gurkha, Hereford, long time in the military, very uh, uh, an exceptional career. Um, you've been out for about a year. Yep. Been out for about a year. You still smashing life. You know, you've, we'll come on to the recent records and stuff. You like the break Everest and stuff like that when bringing amputees up mm-hmm. there doing incredible work. Um, you were. Were you not. A, did you not. Were you not a monk? I was, yeah. A monk in yeah. Nepal. Yeah. Oh, God, definitely come on to that. But we're going to start off. Uh, going back onto a question that I asked you on the H-Hour icebreaker just now. Uh, the question was, what are you currently reading? You said to me, I try not to read or write anything because I don't want... Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to give the reason like because you can elaborate on that. But with the exception of functional reading, when you were going for the Gurkhas selection, when you are going for uh, Special Forces selection, obviously there's a functional need there to take on the information and knowledge you need to get to where you need to be outside of that, those functional requirements you avoid reading or writing is that correct absolutely yes right go on brief me up because it sounds crazy so educate me why are you doing that why did you do it yeah so um yeah it, with uh with my limited understanding about the life and then the you know i i guess the how the life work so Anything do we perceive, we, 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 you know, like gather information, it is actually, if you look into and a little bit more pay attention, it's just the information we gather from different sense perception. Then if you gather from outside, anything you gather, whichever sense perception is not you, it's something else. And then, and then, the most importantly, you know, if we use the one specific sense perception to gather information or knowledge, that's what became a memory. And, you know, like more memories, information, energy we gave for the specific memory became, you know, part of energy. And that became emotion, which can be basically anything <coughs> we gather from outside is not good for, for our own life, life process. Hence... Um, what I'm trying to do is myself is to clear up, you know, uh, clear off all the extra information so that the will not have unnecessary thought process going in my head. How do you grow as an individual with that with that approach? I'm not saying you don't. I'm asking yeah. how you yeah. do it. So, so obviously you're, you're yeah. very like you know you're a very uh i was going to use the word enlightened then you know you're a very knowledgeable person lost experience and, and you've obviously spent a lot of time in your own mind mm-hmm. you know which is arguably the most of the growth goes on right absolutely yeah. so but is it not a place for the those outside influences so mm, technically not you know technically but what we uh don't know is unlimited and it's what we know is very limited. So the only way, like, uh, you know, it's, it's like, for example, just taking a medicine, you know, if we take, and if we became ill or sick, we just take a medicine, that medicine, the only way medicine effective is evolving as part of life, as part of body, you know, goes every, you know, van and in all the, you know, like cell in a body so that it became effective. And in terms of knowledge and information, that is the, if we gather, we are just gathering very limited information knowledge in the universe. 
you know not even not even talking about the books how many books there we can read maybe thousand million but there's you can imagine how many books and how many information is untappable you know you can imagine you know, looking at the universe you know, st- uh, you know like label so that in order to be more profound and knowledge for yourself is to evolve with the universe not to be part of any specific knowledge or information that's going to be just limited us to become part of the bigger um you know bigger process how do you deal with so uh, what what about um i'm thinking on a practical day to day basis when it comes to like current events for example yeah you got ukraine going on you yep. got political situations you in the uk all yep. sorts of craziness so do you feel a need to maintain any handle on that whatsoever or it's irrelevant it's irrelevant to your existence it is i think for example uh, it is that's why we know like we briefly talk about the, our intention and desire and dreams because if if a people like you and i wasn't exist or what we did in our part of the career of you know being a military in front line living our life you know in front line that is the reason you know one day so today someone else doing it and we can have a you know brew and talk about this stuff for that is you know absolutely you know important <coughs> for the guys who have been working f- putting their life in the line in order to make ourselves safe here for that we have to do like we, you have to do whatever you have to do in order to be good at it that but when you talking about the you know life uh, because that is the past that's the part of our you know identity who we are and you know what we like to achieve in our you know limited life you know we have very limited life span and you know that's as a job but when you go you know um, uh, you know when you go beyond as part of life process is slightly different because life as a life in a truth that doesn't process in that way the way we see you know as a, you know like way we see and heart or the dual you know life process is different for that uh but if we don't do the right thing and then the right you know follow our discipline right now the tomorrow maybe generation generation our generation for kids and grand they will be li- living in the hell so we have to do the whatever the important right now to, in order to live them peaceful life how sh- how you mentioned um, intentions and desires and dreams there. So how should someone go about selecting or deciding what their desire or intention or dream should be? Especially in a world now where it, it's very materialistic um, and, it's, and, uh, and, and people mm. are, are more observable, mm. right? So you can go on a TikTok, you can go on to Instagram, you can go on to Facebook, you can go on yeah. TV and see so many people, so many influences on you, mm. potential role models, especially for young kids, and you and you and you maybe want to replicate that or take mm. something from them, uh, and and convert that into your dream or desire. Yeah. How? What's the right way to go about it? How should how should I, for example, yeah. select what I want to achieve? Yeah. What should I be looking at? Focusing on. I think uh, most important, uh, importantly, whatever do in in our life, like you know, like mom and dad, you know, or the you know, <coughs> like all the teachers and uh, our senior in the military, we we all need to have some sort of guideline, guideline, and then the teacher. Uh, we definitely need to have some sort of role model. That is very important because when you are young we don't know what is actually life about you know we just but what we know is someone is doing you know <coughs> you know doing the right thing or inspiring thing this is one important thing for the, all the kids what they like to do or achieve and find someone to role model and second second thing is which i you know like have been practicing myself is the in order to be successful life in our um you know in our life process a lot of us a lot of a lot of especially the western all i would say is living on the uh, mental body uh, what that means is living in the perception you know what we gather information and knowledge but it is very important also how can we in sync like mental body and then the physical body and spiritual body or the spirit or the soul of ourselves so 
uh, what that means is that the the in 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 the normal understanding, normal perspective world we living, is that the every every you know like when you wake up in the morning, and then see the vision, you know maybe thought through something is that going to be relevant in twenty years? Sorry, so that, see the vision of where you want to be, what yes, you want to do, wha whatever desire or dream you have. Have you considered spending time with you with that dream, and maybe see is twenty years time? Is that going to be relevant? I think if we do that, and then the wall, and then your perception, and then the, you know, the result will be different. That rather than just you know whatever in the mind, or oh, I want to be you know like let's say doctor, engineer, or paras, or you know whatever you want to do. That and then we just you know run behind our dream without thought process but why don't we let's say the only way in our perspective wall is can we sit down for maybe five or ten minutes with that thought thought process in our vision right i want to be a sas or i want to be a gurkha <coughs> sit down and then do the breathing pattern so that mean it dissolve part of a whole energy rather than just a mental body and then have think about how relevant that gonna be when you are twenty years old or when you are on deathbed. So validate in the yes, dream. Absolutely. And I think you know like if you do the twenty years, I think you not go far wrong. But if you if you do the same validating dreams or sitting down in the morning and when you are deathbed, you know, then that's give you definitely to the life perspective, beyond your life, you know, what what's that gonna be dream after your death? Is that still going to be relevant to your generation? Not only your life, but something relevant to the forthcoming generation. Then we're not going to fo go far, far wrong, basically. Mm. I thought of that question recently. I said recently, the last couple of years, and it's, uh, what do I want to achieve? What when I am on my deathbed? Yeah. What do I want to think about my life? Absolutely. You know, uh, and, and and I and it thought about it a lot. It's like it's not an easy question to ask yourself. Yeah. It's not easy. You go. Phew, uh, what do I want to have achieved? That's what it was. What yeah. do I want to have achieved? And, you know, you, you default to, oh, I want to have loads of money. I want to be a homeowner. I want to have, you know, I want to have something to leave my my kids. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. And what I put, what I decided for me, which which felt good for me, is I just I, all I want is to so for for to be remembered as as to to, to have generally led a good life. Yeah. I say generally because you can't. Get it perfect all the time, no, right? No. You know, when I say yeah. good life, I mean I'm a good person, yep. generally a good person. So when people are at my funeral, yep. or uh, whatever I have, you know, and they and they say something, they go up and they, everyone says something at funerals, right? You never hear any, you never hear anyone say bad stuff, obviously. But when they're saying stuff about me and it's it's nice stuff, I want them to mean it. Like I want them to mean what they're saying. They genuinely mean it, and, that, and that's it. And when I was thinking more about that, that led me to thinking, well. You, you you aim and intent each day. So you get in the morning. What yeah. what gets you going? Is more to so you, perhaps it's a good idea for a goal to be focusing on your state, mm -hmm. what you are every single day, as opposed to trying to achieve that. These lights flickering in here. So it's lights flickering. As opposed to trying to achieve something like you know join the Paris or yeah, yeah. or X amount of money yeah. or home or all yeah. that and. So it's for me. It's like just try and be good every day. Yeah, and I feel like that helps. I feel like that helps move towards a goal or an outcome mm -hmm. that is really positive. Mm -hmm. but I just don't know it yet. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, do you, do you know what I mean? Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. that, is that is that edging on to the kind of uh, what's the word? Um, living in the moment. Mm -hmm. So that's a definitely a, that's a, a, a monk teaching yeah. right that's a big part of nepalese yeah. culture as well yeah, yeah. so what is so how would you describe that i just live in the moment what does that mean to you so i think that is very uh, you know interesting question because what that mean is um, a lot of people you know talking about living the moment but is there any is there any other way we can live not now and live for tomorrow you know, that's only way, uh, what I'm saying is only way we're living is we are living here, right now, because our heartbeat is for right now, not for tomorrow. 
and our breathing is for right now, not for tomorrow. But the only thing is we are not our thought process, our mind, and you know, like our thought process is not with us. What do you mean? What I mean is we are existing right now. This is in the moment. Can you ca can we see somewhere else, like my life, apart from right now? No, because we are right now. My what I'm saying is my heart is beating right n right one moment for this moment, not for tomorrow or not for yesterday, because we our our body and soul is for the moment, but only our mind is somewhere else, not in the moment. Mm. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that is the you know that's that's us to realize and go beyond our again because we're living so much in our mental body or perception we actually not our life is for living right now here hot it's beating for right this moment for this moment only and then but for us it's also bring that perception our sense perception with that hot beat and <coughs> in, in that so basically you you saying the what is the right way of living the uh, you know in in the last let's say Him Him himalayan or nepalese way is that there is a saying in nepal so whether you know we always wanted to walk in a middle path so what that mean is that not you know like in understanding is that if we happy or if you are sad then that's not gonna last for longer. Eventually, it's just a matter of time or the event, you will come back to the same, you know. And if you are happy, you might go right, let's say, if you are sad, you might go left. What that meaning is, in order to be in the middle, you have to be always conscious, neither be happy nor sad. This is the only way to be, uh, you know, like, emotionally you know psychologically and physically in the moment you know like uh, the, what i'm saying is again and it that's why be be careful you know when you are happy and be careful when you are sad because that's the way that's why your our process as in mental and perception will change according to our thought process and emotion change either happy or sad is not good for for the living being the the problem we have is that a lot of people are looking for the weekend, weekend, you know, weekend mindset. Oh, we're going to have, you know, nice night out, like kind of vibration, happy. But when you come to the Monday, we same come down to the same again, the square. And then maybe when I say we go, you know, stressful, you know, like driven because we have so many mission and achieve our life beyond what we wanted to achieve. And then when you come to weekend, then we go cross to the other side. So rather than living in that, kind of two, you know, like two partition <coughs> here and there, th always try to walk in the middle, middle land. So that means you can, you have a whole control of your body, mind and soul being in one place. And then, you know, going back to the reason, like we saying before <coughs> is, can we, can we, how can we access, how can we, you know, find the right bearing in that, you know, in the moment is that the having a right vision and right cause. You know, we all need we all we all need the right cause and reason, you know, to achieve in our life because whole our life process is part of evolving with the information we gather and knowledge we gather and then only way to make the right bearing or the, our compass, you know, bearing right is that not to go <coughs> right or not to go the left, try to stay in the you know, right bearing. You know, like not like physical path but emotion. And you know, like spiritual, and bring that together in 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 the middle path. Can I ask you a question about um, when so joining the Gurkhas? What's the motivation for what? Yeah, what's the driving force that th th that is the reason for young guys in Nepal want to join the Gurkhas? Is it what? It's like so, part of it must be is a right of passage it's a it's a cultural and community thing right it's, yeah. it's, it's, like, it's almost like a, this is what you do you try yeah. this is what you need to do yeah but outside of that is it a, is it a stability thing is it a financial thing um because yeah what is it what is the what is the main driving force behind it i mean you've got the honor there yeah. you've got the the challenge yeah what, what would you say is that is the main driving force for for people wanting to join the gurkhas uh you know it, it is a life you know, it is a 
uh, it's, it's just the process of life being. So what that means is when you talk about life, it is pretty much everything. You know, all the thing you mentioned about the, you know, like the, um, you know, the community and then the <coughs> finance stability and then honor. You know, being being in that. You know, in the driv. You know, like leading leading force in the local community. Not only that, but the national is the part of the, you know, like the respect and you know, honor you got. And so, and also that, that became life for, for the young boys. And then you have, then that make your dream, isn't it? And then you almost, almost, you know, it's uh, in, in, the, in the Netflix culture, you are not living your own dream. You're not living your own life. You're living for someone else. Because the community and then the your parents love emotion is make you that way, you know you had no choice. For example, you know I you know when I before I even born my mom and my parents dream was me joining the Gurkhas. See what I mean? So actually I've been already my future is already you know drawn for me, <laughs> not even before I born. So uh, there you go. Yes, that's why it became part of your life, you know, the destiny. And a actually, if you look all our life, you know, every every individual life, it, that not so much, not many people have had their own desire and destiny. You know, <coughs> someone is already someone and give us a name. You know, someone give us a, you know, races and color everything before we born. So, like, we're a, we're a product of other people's influence Absolutely. as opposed to yeah. our own. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Slightly depressing, <laughs> yeah. but interesting as yeah. well. So, what do you think about free will, then? So, th you know, that is, that's why, you know, that's why it is um, then, you know, that's interesting. You know, this is the question I've been asking myself, and we will not have a free will until you empty yourself completely. What that means is that in 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 the in a, let's say in in our community right now in the Western community we call mindfulness, but like I say, there's only so much limited knowledge and information we can put it in ourselves. Is compare the information, knowledge, technology we have. It's impossible to <coughs> gather. The only way to only way to clear our you know all the uh, information and knowledge. Not only talking about the no technical te uh, technological community or condition, but we're talking about the deep down, you know, the uh, mm, genetically, you know, biologically, who we are. We made like millions of years of human revolution. In order to empty that, the only way for the empty that is that's why people spend their life living in the cave, you know, in in Himalayas, and then you know people uh, give up everything, attachment. And that's it's you know th this is very deep down. You c it is possible, it, it is possible to clear up all the clinch millions of our you know uh, um, biologically and genetically. Forget about anything gathering through the perception we talk, and then go through that deeper down. Is you have to clinch millions of years of you know information and knowledge we gather in our cell. How long did you live as a monk for? Uh, 19 years before I joined the Gurkhas, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. How old were you when you joined the Gurkhas? 19. Holy. I didn't re I So you were... So that's quite old, isn't it? At the, because normally it's younger. Younger lads are joined the Gurkhas. Yeah. Right, 16. So, seven. yeah. So, no, it's the uh, uh, 17 to 21 is the Gurkhas. Oh, okay. Yeah, 17 okay. to 21 is the Gurkhas, you know, like uh, age. So you were born. Yep. Very, hang on, explain, so go from the start. Yep. How did you end up living as a monk? So basically, so it's just the uh, you know tradition and culture. The way I you know I born I born in obviously in the Himalayas. Uh, you know um, down by the Annapurna Range. Those who you know who are aware of the geographical Nepal, uh, about two thousand meter altitude, and and the the culture we I born was because I was eldest son. In, an, in in the Himalayan culture, there is a culture, you know, if you are eldest son, you ha I have to be part of the ritual, you know, wake up every morning, 4 a.m., had a cold shower, 
and then the, wear the you know like the, all the monk wear the dress like white red yellow each color has different significance and then each day has different color and then all the name were given according to the day you born and all the actually day the seven days in the world exist is the day you born is where you have the eyes on to the planet which planet that's how the day was you know like uh, designed and 12 years we, we can talk about that more you know that's too vast so uh, and then and then then I had to do the worship you know after 4 a.m. cold shower the day you wear the dress whatever meant to and then worship the you know tree worship the cow worship the stone and then when you say worship how what you mean, how would you worship the worship so tree? yeah it is very interesting because the you know like did you hear a forest bathing no no it is very popular now you know like they talk yoga you know like in a meditation in in you know where, where we now in the western world but it's pretty much same in you know like uh in East, Eastern, I was Eastern philosophy, but that isn't going on thousand years. So, what that means worship is that the there is certain process. For example, when I worship the trees, as part of the process, is that the uh, we have to give all the elements, you know, life in order to live any living creature in the world. The five elements are without five elements, we can't believe, you know, live basically fire water air space and then the uh, earth those are the five elements for not only human any living <coughs> creature to exist and we have to give this element to the trees and we have to do the clockwise you know going round the trees and you know you know basically wishing for the best and appreciating uh, the giving oxygen for us to live so this is the one example worship the tree and we worship the snake and uh, why the snake so in the uh, uh in the eastern philosophy or the way in the buddhist or the hindu you know like the thousand years if you look at the we, you know if you look at the you know especially the human perception we are the we are the you know living creature. We perceive the information through our sense, isn't it? But if you look at the snake, the snake is the only living creature that can observe, not to see because not to see our color, skin, or thing. It can preserve the molecule of what, you know like flow in the blood in our body. Really? Yeah. Just pull that mic over too slightly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then the, and then the. And also, it has it is the only living creature, you know. Like when we, uh, and all the C spine vertebras are parallel to the ground, so it it can perceive more than forty days what's going to happen here. No, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, you need you need to you need to follow this one to the you know like in the some of the research on they have done like scientists and peers you know like so the. Uh, explain that to explain that more in more detail what you're saying there so basically uh because d now because i'm doing a lot of research now i that's why i you know like worship grown up as before i joined the gurkhas now i'm doing all this right that's why i say what's the science behind you mm. know wh why i grown up like that and then the, when you ask the snake then i always say i always ask right why are we doing the every house in the himalayas if you go in a nepal have you been to Nepal before? No. No, you should. Then if you go to the Nepal house, they have the snake, uh, you know, like pictures on top of the house, you know, on top of the door. And we have to wash it every morning. And I had to because this is the way the culture is. And, you know, when you are 18, 19, you don't like whatever your parents told, this is a culture. You, either you don't like it, but you have to do it. And then, then, then now lately, you know, like then I then start doing all this thing and who, you know, all this question we ask ourselves, how can we profound? And then I said, like, oh, anyway, get get back to me on that situation. Oh, this is where I grown up. Then I start doing this all this research and what's the science saying? Why are we doing this thing? And then, and then this is what I found about the snake is that the first thing is they are, you know, like the they are whatever or the backbone is always parallel to the ground. That's how they perceive the earth. You know, 
the energy, what's going to happen. And then like thousand years ago, you know, when the uh, when you're living in the mountain, we have to because we couldn't perceive the more information. And then the only way to perceive is to looking at the you know other living creature. For example, you know, like there's there's proof that dog can smell our sometimes they you know like smell more than you know like how many millions times than us, because they enhance their perception of smelling. And then they have found the snake has the same ability to perceive either gonna especially landslide, and then the you know like earthquake, raining. They can predict it. They, they can predict, and then they will move from the land area you know, areas up to two weeks before. Yes, and then what the people is following them, and later on what they found is that, oh, actually you can say it's a god because he's saving your life, you know. Not in like rudimentary way, but in the fact, living, you know, keeping us in the moment. And hence, the reason we worship this name. That is crazy, isn't it? <laughs> that is crazy. Something that is known. So, yeah. you know, within the Nepalese culture, something that is known. Yeah. By in, in the Himalayan, yeah. Himalayan culture and the Nepalese yeah. culture that snakes can do this. Yep. Yeah. And that's what you're worshipping for thousands and thousands, thousands of years. years. Yeah. And it takes to... Like now, yeah. for the science to catch up and go, oh, by the way, uh, yeah, yeah, snakes can do that. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we've proven it now, and like, well, we knew it all along. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. That is yeah. crazy. That is, is crazy. It Goodness is. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Goodness me. What do you um uh did? So as you're thinking more in depth now, and sort of sounds like you're analyzing yep. why you are who you are, why your mind is the way it is, why the cultures yes. are the way they are, that, but that make you who you are now, right? Absolutely. Yep. Does does did, does your military service not challenge any of your spiritual thinking and 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 uh, the way you think we should? live or behave mm. good and bad and all the rest of it yeah. right um does do you, is, do you have any any challenge there is there any 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 yeah any challenge to your spirituality with it i think it's uh of course because to be honest i wouldn't be here and who am i without military and in all my experience uh to be honest, at the at the same time i'm very privileged and honored you know to be served and then the Actually, my tiger, my tiger was in in the in a war time, you know, being going back to like I say when I grown up until 19 years, I was just I hated basically. Why the hell I'm awake at 4 a.m. doing the cold shower and doing all the worship snake and trees and stone, <laughs> like and because I had no choice. This is the culture and traditional I had to follow. And joining the girl has, you know, like this, forget about it. And obviously, eventually, head for it. And then, actually, in the middle of the, in the middle of the war fight zone in the Iraq, and you know, something triggered me. Obviously, that specific uh, event, uh, you know, like the after we do whatever we do, and then the girl come and hold my hand. Or actually, on the actually, actually on the mission. So in Iraq on a mission, yep. he'd done the he'd done the connect piece, yep. and now he's sort of in the reorg, the, yep. the, the yep. wind down. Yeah, he's still on the ground. He's still on the still ground. Still a threat. He's still a threat. And what happened? The goal, uh, goal, you know, like young girl, come and hold my hand, and then saying, "Oh, why, why, why did you, why did you done what you done?" And you know, like in in you know, like all the men, I said, like, cause you know, we 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 thought he's a bad intention. He had a bad intention. Oh, she so killed someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the done that, and we have to do in order to protect the community, and then you know, like thing, and then, but actually, and she said, you know, like actually, he's he's a god. Every cultural people, you know, like where you've been in that areas, they treat him like a god. He's influential guy in the area, in the whole community. And this then, guy that you killed. Yeah, this guy. And then the and then and and first and foremost he was my father. And then, you know, but you know, like you know, still we are in danger zone and we do the thing. But later on I realized that the that's the first time I realized that the whatever we perceive through our perception is related to me and myself. No, 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 no one else. Whatever thing I, you know, I th whatever I think good or bad, is just through me and my perception. And once I, re I know, like realize that it's not, you know, like uh, then it it helped me <coughs> to more 
response, you know, responsive with any event or situation, not reactive. But what is reactive is that the something you react when, you know, reflect and react with your sense perception. What is responsive is that something you need to go beyond your perception and, you know, re analyze more before you, you know, act. So that means at least it will give you some sort of more deeper, profound understanding of any event or situation, not not to follow your emotion or reaction with your perception, because perception lied to us. So how did that experience change the way you were doing things? Because you obviously stay, you, you, you served for a long time after that, right? Yeah, if we're talking about Iraq, yeah, this wasn't yeah, recent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. So I think the how that, uh, then, then that to be honest, since then, Incident. I start looking back uh, to my own, and that's the first time I realize my perception is not the right all the time. I need to look into more, and then that, and I start doing a lot of research and thing. Then, uh, after you know, f few years of you know doing that kind of on my own, finding myself, then take me to that the grown my, you know, like my childhood. And then I realized all the you know routine and practice I did to kind of oh, this is where I am because I condition that way, you know what is a life about, and then understanding and realizing <coughs> the science. That's why I say science behind wh why we worship the tree. By then, no one has told me actually our lungs. One of the lungs is tree. You know, without tree, w whatever we have dream or vision or desire. Nothing else matter because first of all we have to live right now, take a breath right now. And the tree provides the oxygen. Absolutely, and that is one of the reason. And to you know worship or to understanding without you, I wouldn't be here. You know because when we see, but we don't see that thing. So that's why kind of uh, uh, take me to the more, you know like not people talk about you know like uh, you know. You know, re religionalize, or you you are Buddhist, you are Christian, you are Hindu, all these thing. But for me, it's pretty much nothing to do with that. But what is the relevant to our life? You know, what is the relevant to our life enhancement and you know perception to see more than what we see? You know, uh, for example, I never, you know, I always really, really taught me is that the uh, I'm, you know, I'm proud to be Gurkhas, but when I'm in, in the wartime, there is only the British guys who is a you know, close friend of me willing to die for me, you know. Those are the things you can't see, you know, you can't hear. And, and you know, but for that is we have to connect in a spiritual soul level as a life, not who you are, you know, what you say, what you do. But you as a life to connect with that has to be go beyond our perception of what, what we see. And, you know, it's, it's my own experience on, on the from battlefield to, you know, to, to, to the, I guess, spiritual from Himalayan. And then that's why I said, can I go beyond my perception? Can I go, can I in touch with the truth nature of who we are rather than what, you know, what people think who we are? Mm. I think if on that, you know, recognizing to ignore the worship of it but just recognizing yes. that yes you exist because of all these enablers absolutely yeah but, but, but to do that you yeah. sort of have yeah. to value life you have to recognize how fragile it is which i think most most people yeah most society don't do they don't value that yes. i just exist man. Yes. you yeah. know uh yeah. I, I again my own my own journey very recently actually of of you hear all the time be be thankful for mm. who you are what you've got be be thankful just alive yep. and i've sort of only bought into that in terms of actually really understood or really accepted it as a valid a valid thing you know mm. like um how how you say you don't realize how lucky you are yeah you know even like right now i, I you know i'm not a millionaire you know yeah. i'm not i'm not i've not got x y z that i want in life but i'm here yeah i like the baseline i exist yeah i can put food on my plate yeah you know i can get from a to b food on my plate that is it I've, i'm healthy yeah i've got the disease i'm not an amputee for example yeah you know i've got I've, i'm i am healthy and w above that but that is that is like the core stuff if you've got that you you read it the rock yeah There's the ever everything else is a what's the word everything else is a is a Brucey bonus yep. on top of that, you yep. know. So, so 
I try and tell myself that when I'm, I'm like kicking myself in the nads for whatever reason, right. mentally. It's, 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 it's all right. You know, it's all right. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that, I think, because again, we're going back to that materialism yep. and the, the perception yep. of what you think you should be as a yep. human and what, what, uh, what people think a successful human being looks like money, yep. Gucci kit, you know, the yep. right brands, a flash car, a massive house. Mm -hmm. It's not. I, I mean, arguably, you know, listening to listen, you, you know, arguably the, mo the most the most successful people are the ones who are most in touch with themselves and most satisfied and, and happy and just content. And Absolutely. Content. Yep. Contentment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. When you uh, when you when you when we were talking on the icebreaker, I think it was on the icebreaker. You said it. You 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 lowered your chair right down. Yeah. <laughs> and you said you like when you're doing stuff like this, you like yeah. to be close to the earth. Yep. Talk to me about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, you know, I think we briefly talk about the five elements of life. Uh, so in order to not only the human life, for any living creature on the planet, in the universe, the five elements, without any of them, we doesn't exist as a life. So it's like, you know, uh, water, air, earth, fire, any space. If any of this element is not there, we have either have the chronic disease, I either we have a, a depression, or we will not. We something is not in balance for our living life. So one of them being a earth, you know, which is like you know the you know energy we, we you know like food, it's earth come from earth. And then we all have all thing in our house, you know, like how the energy within, you know, like generate and, you know, dissolve with us. For example, as part of our human for living creature is that the heat we have within our, within 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 us, there's always fire going on. But sometimes when the fire is very, very strong element, it can burn so much energy and it can also burn unnecessary. For that, for that is always something is neutralizing is the earth energy or the, you know like electric, the you know like shock we can release, and if you if you in touch with any of these five element, that's what we need for life, you know. And then if how can we balance that is that the try to connect with all of them because if you think, you know properly, then none of it's very. Through our perception, it's hard to get that. For example, air. You know, if it is fresh air, we, we pretty much from the five senses we can feel it, touch it, see, hear. Is that? But without that, you know, air, we actually can't live for a second. So this is how the our body is made, and but only for that in touch any of this element which is without we are not going to exist is that the can you aware of that you know can we do physically mentally or emotionally connect with this important bit and then so that you know we can we can be more lively or we can be more truthful with ourselves mm. it makes sense um why have you so, so you left last year yeah right uh, why are you doing what you're doing now in terms of facilitating ex-military onto uh, arduous events, basically, mm -hmm. right? So you recently you took um, a couple of w WMPTs to Everest base camp, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, we'll go. In fact, if you want to talk about that as well, describe what you did there, because I'd like to hear the, the full thing. Um, but what's the reasons behind it? What what you what you're trying to achieve? How does this fit in? How does this fit in with your spirituality, your journey, where where you're, where you're going in life? How does it how does it slot in there? So one thing I realize in 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 for complete you know profound life as human life is the first thing is to profound ourselves, our thought process being you know so what we call the good or bad find your own good or bad and try to be pure version of yourself and it's definitely you know go beyond, beyond our perception understand your life purpose 
And then second thing is once you have that in your life, it's pretty much nothing to do with the money and all the thing, you know, like how can you contain yourself? And second thing is can you can you expand your knowledge and experience to enhance others? Whatever their dream and desire, life could be meaning for them because it might be it might be smaller thing for you or for I. Maybe that something is huge, you know, for someone else's dream. But with your understanding, if you can enhance someone else's life or someone's dream, then I think we should be part of that. You know, in order to not for you, for for them to, you know, in a way transcend transcend their limitation. Because as you can see, uh, especially for us, our veteran, you know, I think I think you must have been been through that same process. What I realize is, one way we are in the wire, you know, so called in in a say we got so much, you know, things going on. We mentally, physically, everything occupied. But once you actually live, bec- you you kind of live live alone. Long, you don't have sense of community, uh, and then belonging is not there. And how can we create that? Those who left and those who wants to, and then for me, is obviously, you know, I've been very privileged and honored during the service. I gathered a lot of, you know, um, I say expertise on the climbing and mountain and walking in that. Then, then this is probably the path for me to enhance, you know, if with that knowledge and experience I have. Uh, through the military, then I, c- I can pass it to the guys who need the most. And I found, you know, uh, one of the, to be honest, one of the uh, example was when I took the three double amputees on the Mount Blanc, 2019. And, um, and you know, you you realize, not, not they are working hard work, but you realize yourself to kind of in honor your life, you know, what you have. And what you take it for a bonus is someone is always dying for it. You know, we don't see that thing. And then if you put in that situation, you know, conducive environment and situation, extreme environment and situation, realize that actually you are worth it. Whatever you do, it could be just waking up in the morning, you know. And of course, there is a limitation with our body, you know, and, you know, physical and mental. But whatever limitation you have, push that limit to the extreme within your limitation and i found that guys three double amputees you know had not understanding of at all they could climb and they could walk in the you know and summit because the when the three of us three of them in the summit and they look at me and saying oh we are here because of you and then i'm saying i'm here because of you you know where is the when you know, where is the balance but you never Realize that important, but you need to be in that, you know, certain environment and you, you know, make it worth for living every breath of your life. So that, and I say, right, okay, this is what I do then. You know, I'll, if there's anything I can put, changes someone in life and dream, <coughs> then, you know, then I think we should, we should help each other. Yeah, that's an important lesson, right? It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing. You know, um, everyone, Everyone has something someone else can benefit from. Absolutely. You know, and this is for the people who, f- like, they just, they fucking hate themselves. They feel worthless. Yeah. They just, it's, r- it's wrong. It's incorrect. Yeah. You you have something Absolutely. other people can benefit from. Yeah. You have experiences no one else can ever have. Absolutely. That you're completely unique. Yeah. So you have knowledge, because you only get, you get knowledge from experiences. And if your if your experiences no one else can have, then you have knowledge no one else can have. Absolutely. You have benefit to everyone. And it, it, it's interesting you saying that, you know, those amputees looking at you, thinking, fucking hell, we're, we're because of you, but you getting something equally from them. 100%. The same thing. 100%. The same thing. Yeah. The importance of uh, the importance of undertaking hardship, pushing your limits, yeah. putting yourself outside of the comfort zone. Yeah. And and bringing other people along for the ride too, you yes, know. Yeah, it's it's growth, right? It's growth. Yep. And when you push yourself to your limits, yep. you know it's better than anyone. You push yourself to the limits; it pushes your mind yep. d- to a deeper understanding of yourself. Absolutely, a deeper understanding, yeah. Yeah. and you assign more value to yourself. Absolutely, you're more valuable. Yeah. You know, yeah. you feel more valuable. I think it's incredible. It's incredible. Was that the first time you did that? Then was yes. on Mont Blanc. Yes, yeah. That's what the we started. To be honest, I think you you said the really really you know like uh, 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 
uh, to the point because you know like maybe for, for maybe for us you know like what i get from summiting the mount blong is maybe nothing because it's 4000 meter but you know what i get as a life to seeing them to understand and you know be a grateful for the reason which is beyond our you know perception you know beyond our body and emotion level is to true yourself is to the soul who you are to and the uh, definitely i think we you know that's that's probably one thing it does us to is to limit limitation you know like sometimes you see them they were they were saying oh, we never they never be there with their limitation of physical limitation but yet they are there because it's just because we we're sharing our knowledge and information isn't it what like we say you have something you know you know it's maybe someone else something but if you walk together or share the knowledge then he don't have to go through all this pain this is the whole point of sharing and you know teaching philosophy i guess mm. so how did that how did that trip come about then that first one what happened there how did you did you know those guys already no so basically um, i take it with two blokes i take it and uh, three three me- three yeah, double mpt yeah, yeah. sorry three. so so basically um uh I think it came around because you know the in 2007 and there's 200 years Gorkha anniversary um, in uh, 2015 started and then the, the their plan was to take uh, to uh, to uh, to have the Gurkhas on the Everest ex- Everest expedition for 200 years serving in honor of the Queen's um, kind of anniversary and then and then then I I've been. And I've been tasked to kind of, you know, do the fundamental, all the climbing and kind of lead the Everest expedition for the Gurkhas. And, and obviously that we did, to be honest, that is the another world record, you know, in the in the Gurkhas, 13, 13, 13 S- s- service people. In, it is actually, it is the biggest, um, you know, manpower on the top of the Everest in, so far with one, one kind of, you know, leadership or one expedition. 13 of us. And when I did that, then there is a guy called Hari Buddha Mogar, who is another double amputee. We, we served in the Gurkhas together. Then obviously he tigered like, oh, it's a Chris <laughs> doing all this thing. And he, I think he must have seen the girl. Like, <coughs> and he's like, and he, then we con- he connect me and like, oh, do you remember me? You know, like th- three years back, we were together in the Gurkhas. I was like, of course. And it's like, oh, I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to climb the Everest. And to be honest, he's he's he connected me because he's amputee and he has the connection with all the you know like veterans and you know like uh, amputees and all the you know like veteran who has that in that situation. And uh, then then he I think connected with the other guy Justin Davis, ex rifles, and the Stephen, uh, he's ex Royal Wales I think. So three of them and then and then the two of they come right. We wanna. Uh, climb and now yes yeah, so like since last four or five years we've been co- you know still continuing you know s- working together actually harry uh is committed for Everest next year will be the first double empty justin davis is committed pretty much committed for the seven summit uh so he's you know we just came back from you know like you say came back from mera peak uh last month and the uh, I mean it's also in comes with the Stefan, you know, maybe try to do like Kilimanjaro or something in you know pretty soon. So yeah, we we've been working together, uh, just basically learning and sharing our knowledge. How can we help each other and uh, you know transcend our limitation with the physical, mental, and psychological. So are you, are you is this through? Are you doing this like as a as a charity? Are you setting up an organization? Have you got an organization set up? Is it is this a thing you could c- continue to do? For, for put people with physical disabilities on crazy high mountains. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. the plan? Yeah, so I think, like I say, I think for me is the important thing is uh, where can I put the value, you know, in terms of my experience, knowledge, to be honest, I do, do have, a, you know, I, so I would say normal, normal body come and say, we want to climb the Everest. And I say like, oh, you don't need me because, you know, you got everything. And and I said I'm I'm committed for those where I can make you know a lot more difference you know with my experience and knowledge, and also for them is I I think this is very value for the veteran who who are you know we all are suffering some some level either we like it not like but maybe where 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 I can input more you know my knowledge and experience to achieve the, the 
the the need most or they can thrive you know more with our experience with them that's why i'm yes i'm committed with the with the especially veteran some sort of needs you know physical mental or you know not only that basically um ha- had climb with the parkinson guy uh, yeah, yeah uh, from the f- and then had depth from japan and obviously a lot of uh, you know our guys you know um, yeah definitely because like i say i think that's where i i i think as as a life i think we can we can you know share more knowledge and make their dream come true because you and i we all have some sort of experience knowledge to share mm. yeah definitely you so you've been out for about a year what's uh, what has the transition been like for you what's what has there been anything you weren't expecting yes to be honest that is to be honest that is the uh, that is very very i think uh, valid point for us every serving or ex serving guys need to look in and then realizing actually that is one of the reason i'm you know like i'm here to talk and share because the um we briefly talk about it uh i think it uh, if we are not understanding ourselves you know lot you know like lot of lot of the time we as a human we live in a perspective wall and then the comfortable wall i would say but comfortable wall for the body and mind not for our soul yeah. and but but remember everything come from the soul doesn't really matter how comfortable we are physical mentally living in the good house driving a car that's just the thing for the perspective wall for to see but the soul is not that and in uh, to be honest with my own experience when we are living i think six or seven of us living from the regiment and i end up talking with the individual you know so closely to be you know we will be fine you know we'll be fine just have that faith and and i still have some friends i think so do you i think so we all have a friend living in that wall and very hard to step out to the unknown isn't it and have that faith have that understanding has to be more deeper understanding ourselves to i i'll be fine you know i'll be okay and and other thing is i think we need to accept changes in our life because you know if we look into the whole universe it's moving it's changing every second you know so if you stuck for something or some some emotion love or some person we stuck then we not we not you know adapting at according to the situation i think as long as we have that attitude i you know we will adapt as it needs and you know so, uh, so basically in in the uh, in the eastern in himalayan so there is a uh, 36 different dimension of perception and the I- energy you know like living the life 36 way not only one way because the problem come when you identify with one specific thing a specific event then that is a problem you know that's why we have so much problem because i'm this i need to live like that yeah it's interesting isn't it so when you <coughs> yeah it's interesting uh, and the reason I, the reason i asked is uh about that transition is um i think when you go to leave so yeah it's 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 an unknown and sometimes you don't want to leave yep, sometimes yep. you've got a choice but you have to yep. leave because yep. your time's up or whatever right? <laughs> yeah, yeah um but you don't you don't realize how driven and motivated you are by a sense of purpose is a, a sense of value until you leave if you've not got it anymore yes. because what's interesting about the military in the same way you were talking about um growing up in the palm growing up yeah. in that monk like existence right and out the worship the snake and worship the tree and 4 a.m cold showers yeah. that's what you do that's what you had to do yeah. you just had to do it it's part yeah. of the culture but that is what defines you that you what you do through life what defines you and what yes. and it's what motivates motivates you to do whatever you're going to do because you yeah. got to do it right yeah. and you have got a choice <laughs> yes. yeah and it's the same with the military yeah i'd say very few people join the military looking for a sense of purpose very few i i, I think yeah i'm talking a british uh, yeah. i can't speak for yeah. you know nepalese british very few people i didn't join for a sense of purpose if i'm realistic with myself the majority of the reason was it was probably the simplest option for me to do a good career at the time that's one of the main reasons 
but in joining, I ended up with this. I ended up in a, you know, heavily embedded, embedded deep in a in a new culture that I enjoy being part of. You know, sense of purpose, sense of value was all there. And then when I left, gone. Yeah. Didn't even realize how much it defined me until yeah. I left. Yeah. And then you go looking for, even though you didn't create that situation yourself. Yeah. You didn't choose that sense of purpose, sense of value culture, but you, you you grow with it and it becomes you. When you leave, I think people, they go looking to try and re- plug that gap mm. with another sense of purpose, sense of value. And you, you can't do it. You can't do it artificially. Like, yep. it's not possible. Absolutely. It's not possible. Yeah. To your, and the reason I say it's to your point is about uh, understanding of yourself. Yep. You need to focus on what makes you tick now. Yep. What what makes you tick now? What yep. is going to make you happy now? Yes. Not where you, who you think you should be, yes. what you think you should be in five years, 10 years, 15 yep. years time, you know, back to the bank yeah. balance, the yeah. nice car, yeah. the, um, you know, replace that perceived status you yep. thought you had when you were serving and now yep. you haven't got. Yeah. Because you're not a no. major anymore. Yeah. You're not a full screw anymore. Yeah. Nothing in the civil world. It, 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 that's what people think. Yeah. You know, but we've all got yeah. value. You've got something we can we can pass on. It's a really difficult one. I think. It that's is. why I asked if if there's yeah. anything that surprised you with it. Because yeah. uh, it can be a shocker, even to the most, you know, the most prepared people. Yes. Because yeah. uh, when you're in, you don't even perceive it. I don't yeah. think no. how much it is you who you how much. The military defines, yeah. 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 And then that, that is the other thing is because no matter how physically, mentally or psychologically we prepare, we don't know, you know, tomorrow what's going to happen. So it's always shock you anyway. And then for that is to, we need to prepare and willing to change. The minute we are not, then we that's a problem. And then to accept that, you know, accept that tomorrow and then you then have that faith. And this is the biggest thing and to trust yourself, isn't it? Then, then the t- in order to more trustworthy within yourself is to not then not to hang on, you know, with yourself. Basically, what you have at had, what people think. Once you overcome that, then you are in a peace mind, mindful, you know, state. And it definitely, uh, for me, it's definitely help. You know, like the. Um, uh, in the in the morning, wake you know like wake wake up and kind of and then think about what you're gonna do. Have you spend time with yourself or you spend time with your breathing, you know thought process of breathing. You know, um, they say we we they say we breathe forty thousand times every day, but none of none of us consciously breathe. You know, but without one breath, we'll be gone. Then why the hell we're not consciously doing that thing? It's important for me. Can we spend maybe a couple of breaths consciously? You know, it is a matter for us to be in life right now and every heartbeat. And but that to you know, like that will give me that's that that will grounded you, you know, that will grounded you to the moment, you know, what we what are the most important elements in your life. And then everything come up is a bonus. Then there is no way of you you know what people think, what you have, it doesn't really matter because you are who you are in that moment with the most important thing being alive. And once you value that and everything, everything is bonus. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, we need to start wrapping it up. Um, what is next? What is next on the agenda for you? What, you got, what is your, ne- your next um, achievement you're looking to fulfill? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, like I say, we have got, you know, double empathy, uh, average exhibition coming out and the, uh, seven summit and the double t- double amputees and yeah just sharing knowledge information and how can we have a profound community and help each other you know and then at the same time how can i make myself you know uh deeper understanding that that will be always continue work for myself and with that work i gather how can i share with the people need most and yeah where's uh where's best for people to follow you what you're up to? Uh, support you. Yeah, uh, it's the um, uh, Chris Tapa Instagram, and then the HST Advancer is the company I'm working for oh, cool. in yeah. Nepal. So that's the you know kind of company, and then Chris Tapa, and yeah, we can get in touch there and take it from there. Right, perfect, absolutely perfect. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, mate. Absolute pleasure talking to you today. Uh, so glad we got connected. 
Um, and I, I definitely feel a bit more informed about, you know, myself, self-awareness. It's, it's, it's what it's all about, you know, being grateful to the now. Can I put food in my plate? Yes, I can. Okay, I'm fine. I'm existing right now. Let's not flap and try and solve everything <laughs> in the next instant. Yeah. It'll come. It'll Absolutely. come. You know? Yeah. Um, mate, welcome back on anytime you want. And anything I can do support, let me know. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And it's been a privilege. And thank you for having me, mate. Cheers. Too. Cheers. That's it. Thank you for watching Hey Chower. If you enjoyed this episode, why not become a Hey Chower patron? Hey Chower patrons get exclusive access to premium content with guests like the one you just watched. There are private interviews with previous guests and with this guest that nobody will see except for the Hey Chower patrons. So before this podcast was recorded, I recorded an exclusive Q&A, a shorter interview structured around eight questions. All the questions were chosen by patrons beforehand, and that interview is online now for patrons. That happens every time. Patrons also get access to all of the episodes before anyone else. They get advanced viewing of the episodes. And you also get other perks and bonuses. All of the information is on charliecharlie1.com. Just hit the menu item, become a patron. It'll show you everything there, including access to the H-Hour Discord community and private patron-only channels on there. So go to charliecharlie1.com and hit the menu item, become a patron. Easy peasy. If you prefer to listen to your podcast normally, H-Hour is also on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, it's on all of the podcast apps. And if you don't even want to bother with a podcast app, you can go to the, the H-Hour website, charliechannel1.com, and you can actually play the podcast, video or audio, directly through the website, through your browser. Simples. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a supporter. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next episode. Thank you.